Okay. So I'm just going to be going over the basic strategies of speedrunning Death Road to Canada. Um, this is one of my favorite games. Uh, I've been playing it for years now. And a little bit recent, like not too long ago, I got into speedrunning it. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is create your characters. For the modern meta right now, is to have start off with two characters. One is going to be a friend of dog. The perk will be friend of dog. Uh, what this allows you to do is recruit a dog. Dogs have a faster run speed and a higher dexterity, meaning zombies it grab up they uh, grab onto them less. And this is better for speedrunning because it makes the uh, sieges a little bit easier. And the faster run speed means you can get through the final event faster. Um, for the train, I use Tiny Eater, but you can use stuff like Frantic Liner. I think Tiny Eater is the best. Uh, what it does is it allows your character to eat one less food than normal. This, this is good. It saves food for later on in the run. Uh, well, when we speedrun this game, we don't stop at events. Every single event, like the looting events, that you could stop at, we choose to ignore because it saves time. Because you can get the loot you need from text events. So, a lot of this run is determined by text events. It's all RNG. There is skill involved. But that's the main thing about speedrunning this game. It's a lot of luck. For a second character, we're going to have a, car a Civilized Karna. What Civilized does is it maxes out your personality stats, which gives you a charming effect, and makes it so you can pass a lot of- you can pass pretty much every single personality check in the game. You lose uh, morale, but if you know how to navigate the text events, you'll be fine. And the most important part to me is the uh, three point in camp. And that was the personality stats are also important. But, so not only do you start off with decent mechanical and amazing personality, but with the Karnat trait, you start off with even more mechanical. And you get to start with a better car. So, what we do is reset, we reset the beginning of the run until we get the tiny car, which. It, it consumes less gas, so it's better for the on the road. You don't have to get as much, much gas from text events. And with Karna and Civilized combined, this character immediately starts out with maximum mechanical, which is amazing. And so this is going to be your new character combo. Um, as you see here, what I have is just numbers, but they're more uh, civilized car notes. That's because at the first siege, sometimes your mechanic will die. Sometimes you have to ditch them to save time in the uh, River of Sludge event where you're running through a sewer. There are two main types of sieges in this game. Um, I'll go over them a little bit later. Uh, but basically, Make a friend of dog. I use Tiny Eater, but you can use Frantic Liner. Either one. And then you're going to create a few of these. Just uh, Civilized Car Nuts. And so let's hop right into a run. So you're going to have your friend of dog in your first slot and your buddy slot. Okay. Uh, short Road is the most common uh, category to run. Start off. I got lucky. What I did is I paused before the text event says that says hit the road. When you press hit the road, the run starts and the game recognizes that um, a run has been started. Like the game has started. But before then, if you pause, you can just quit and it's basically saying the game doesn't count. So I got tiny car right off the bat, but you might not get the tiny car. In which case, you're going to have to reset the game. Or not reset, but just quit and delete the save. So this first event, um, 
with this. So you can just spam through these events and you know just spam space and just choose the first option. Um, I like to try and pick House on the Road, uh, Quiet Factory, or uh, I think it's Quiet Office. Because those, you see how you start off right there, and you don't have to drive in with the car for the Elmer and rest stop. What you have to do is you have to wait for the car to drive up, you have to get out of the car and then get back in the car. With those events, you don't have to do that. Um, so I'm gonna sort of screwed here on this first one. So, this run, I would have reset by now, but I'm just gonna try and continue to the first siege. To show you what it is like. And so, for all of these events, if there isn't a pass them by or leave them be option, you're gonna get in, immediately get back in the car, and drive away. You will not be looting at all in this when you're speedrunning like this. Uh, this is good because it gives me gasoline. Which I desperately needed after taking that detour. So, I'm about to get a trader camp. We always ignore the traders. Unless you're on a harder game mode, um, where you might need something, you always ignore the trader camps. Um, so this, there's... So, these sort of events, you can imagine them as like in a line. So it starts off with hit the road in your first looting location. Then it goes into a night event where you eat your food and it goes to the next day. Then you get a looting event, I think just a standard text event, and then the night time hits. And then you, and then the day progresses. And then on this day, you get another text event, then you get the trader camp, a recruit, and then a siege. So this is the recruit, and we chose friend of dog because we can get this dog right here. And this dog is essential to our speedrun. So I got bad RNG for the siege. Um, the ones you want are either stuck in a ditch or the river of sludge. So what I'm doing is so you don't have to do this, but I'm checking in here for loot. And we got a chainsaw right away, which makes this run easy. Because I don't have to worry about seizures now. I can just grab this. Go. So if you've played the game and you've uh, noticed my zombo points, how how is it possible that I have 999 zombo points or 800 whatever out of 999? In our Discord, uh, we have a pin message which shows you how to uh, modify your save data. So. I gave myself one minute on everything so I can uh, access every game mode and enough zombie points where I can get every upgrade. Uh, this is because I just got a new laptop and I don't feel like grinding everything back. But you can do that if you're new and you just want to have everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, this is normally a bad thing to do because of the time it wastes. You would normally do that on a looting event or a siege event where you can just where you're automatically in your chunk. Uh, our dog is paranoid, which is good. Because if you saw the Lemuel didn't trust him, that's a paranoid option. Meaning, this dog is paranoid. Which is very helpful. Because <laughs> that means when this mechanic leaves, we'll be able to deal with bandits. Look, see? You can deal with bandits. And I got really lucky with this dog. And so, a lot of speedrunning this game is memorizing these text events. And knowing what stats, or how each stat is going to affect them. It's It takes a lot of just playing the game to get comfortable with the text events and to be able to do them fast. Memorize the outcomes based on your character stats. Um, it really helps if you've played the game a lot. Uh, so this middle part of the run is a little bit boring. That's just 
How it is. Because you're not really doing any events. Oh, this is not good. Fatal are you being bombed? Oh, jeez. Hopefully we run out of gas before that. And, well. I'm going to fight the army of zombies. And try to survive. And we kill my mechanic. Just for the sake of... I mean, this run is dead. I wasn't really going for a time anyways, but... At this point, the rear run is dead. It's two minutes that you can't make up in a siege, that's usually pretty hard. Uh, since this is an easy game mode, um, it shouldn't be too bad. I got a really bad map for it, though, so I'll see. Might live, might not. Um, if I die here, I'll just head to another run where I get the to the end game. I was gonna try and save until a little bit later, so all the zombies clump around here and knock at the door. But they're all just gonna eat his corpse before the siege ends. So as you can see, um, in this game, in game timer, it goes by hours, but it counts up in fives. So I have died. But each hour, in, each in game hour is one minute in real time. So I'm going to cut here and go to an end game siege. Okay, I'm back. So this is the close to the border siege. Um, right now, I'm using Nave Smith's save files. So if you go to speedrun.com, and under the Death Roads Canada resources page, Nave Smith has these um, save files that you can download. And when you install them into the game, you'll get three options. One, close, where you can start it close to the border, one you can start it at City of Crush Oaks, and one where you can practice the final border. So here, I am at close to the border siege. This is the most difficult siege in the game. And there are two possible sieges you can get. You can get a house siege, or the cabin siege. The cabin siege is much easier, and even has a chance of uh, spawning a chainsaw. Which will make life easier. Navy Smith has included a chainsaw, but I'd recommend practicing without it. Because a lot of the time, you won't have the luxury of a chainsaw with full gas. Or even a chainsaw at all. So, I'm just going to continue here. So you're gonna reach the final, the final trading camp. Uh, we ignore the traders, and this is the first thing that'll pop up afterwards. Um, so hideout and house is the harder of the two sieges, much harder. So I'll see if I can do anything with this. I'm gonna use the chainsaw here just to protect these zombies, just to ensure. That's the sound. Most of the time, you won't get a chance off. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kite zombies. In the house siege, if you're unfortunate enough to get it, you will have to kite zombies around. Which. This layout isn't the greatest. There are uh, larger layouts, but there are also worse layouts. Um, Nave's has it, I think you have one HP, because most of the time your dog is not going to be healed. It's going to be one shot. Not one. It, it's weak. Your dog will die. And it's one HP. And so, it seems brutal, but it's good practice. Cabin siege, what I normally do is I run around in the little forest area before going into the cabin for as long as possible. If you can draw it out for about 30 seconds, or is at an even hour, um, it should be good enough for the cabin. But as I said, I like to remain inside the cabin as long as possible. But that was the close to the border siege.
Okay, so this is the City of Crushed Hope section. So, City of Crushed Hopes is the final siege in the game. It's four hours long, and depending on your RNG, it can be pretty tough. So, I'm gonna try it out. Um, so, the main strategy is to kite around. What I like to do is just peek into houses real quick and get the guns and ammo. The other loot does not matter. Just get guns and ammo. Up on that side. Nate, explosives can be super helpful. Um, if there's a large horde, it's easy to clear them out. I got AK-47, which is also it's a decent gun, you know. It's just a fully automatic assault gun. So I got, I would say, a pretty good RNG for this. Just drop that, right side, more grenades. So this is what I do. Some people don't like going into houses. Houses, it can be a little bit risky. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kite zombies in circles. This siege is actually fairly easy, uh, believe it or not. It's like, oh, it's the final siege of the game, it's four hours long, four minutes, but it's really, you get so much room and so many resources. Uh, it does just become really easy. All you do is kite. It's a little bit difficult, so I'm just not paying attention. Uh, luckily the siege ends in 45 seconds. So you can do this without picking up a gun. Just kite. Kiting is to just basically make the zombies follow you. That's why grenades are helpful. It takes out such a large chunk. Pipe bombs are also decent. Uh, or ammo slower, um, explosion high, and they don't do as much damage or they don't destroy as many zombies, but they're still helpful. So I am going to go and do the Big event, which is the end of the death road. So if you have a car, what you can do is ram into this. Um, you ram into the beginning zombies and your dog goes sideways for no reason. This is not where you want to choke. This is the end of the run. This is it. And so with the dog, you just wanna you're gonna run straight up. 
Nave Smith figured out that you can actually trigger the Mounties following you up, out here. So you can go back down. And since it doesn't check for the X axis to uh, spawn Mecha Mountie, I think you can just. I don't know exactly what Mecha is. As long as you hit a certain Y axis, the Mounties will spawn. So, like, by here. So, four is gonna come in. I'm not gonna get optional or skip because I don't have to show you that. Mecha Mountie spawns. And when you go off screen, if there are no zombies, the attackers go away. And you press onward to Canada, the run is over. <laughs> I think it was Strider. Uh, Strider wrote. Uh, somebody just left the screen on for a minute thinking the run was done. <laughs> and they added a bunch of time onto their run. But uh, make sure you press that as soon as possible. And your run is over. This is a, uh, a copy file. I don't know, I just haven't beat a run yet. <laughs> so I'm going to save stats stuff. Did that. But you should be done with your run now. Um, if you have suggestions for other people who run the game, I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff. If you have any questions, ask me. Join the Discord. That is, join the Discord. That's where you're gonna find the most help. Um, most of the time, we're all here to help you, give you tips, tricks, everything. This is just a basic guide to get you started, and for newcomers to refer to. Uh, thank you for watching. Check out some of my speedruns. Check out some of the other guys' speedruns. Uh, yeah.